got my Hacktober t-shirt. If you're new here, my name is Brian Jenks, and today we're talking about some of the new things that GitHub has just unveiled today, December 8th, 2020. So today was actually the start of GitHub Universe, which is, I think, currently an online-only convention for all things software and GitHub. And one of the things I noticed, because sadly I was not able to attend any of the uh, webinars because I you know, have a day job, uh, one thing I was able to do was notice that GitHub has some new features. Namely, a long desired one of mine, which was the discussions feature on repos, which I saw from a mutual contact of mine, Eddie Jowd, who is a big proponent on GitHub and free and open source software. Do check him out. Something super critical for me that I really appreciate is without a hacky browser extension solution, GitHub now has dark mode and I'm a happy camper now. So this is the GitHub that we know and love. It's a very familiar scene. We've seen this before. We see this every day when we're on here working on our repos and just contributing to open source software. As you can tell by the glare on my face, it's blinding. <coughs> I'm a big fan of dark mode. Dark mode in everything, specifically Grub or Groovebox, however you pronounce it. Grubbox, hard dark. I like my dark themes and I basically will put dark theme on any and everything I possibly can. So today, when I found out that GitHub now has a supported dark mode that doesn't rely on any sort of hacky browser extension that you know causes weird aberrant behavior on other sites, whew, I was excited. So how do we get that? Now it's a beta feature and I don't see anything on my homepage, but if you go to your own personal account page right here, uh, in the little corner, we see a little moon and now I have dark mode. And that's it. That's how you turn on dark mode. Now when I go to anywhere else in the site, I no longer have my retinas burned out of my eyeballs. And I'm a much happier person now. Another really awesome feature that has been in beta for a while and not released even to us early testers that I've been looking forward to has just been released. These are GitHub discussions. And I knew about them from a contact of mine, Eddie Jowd, who's big on open source software. I've mentioned him before. And I knew that these were coming. I've been eagerly awaiting them. And now that they're here, I'm incredibly excited for what this means for our so open source software repositories, as well as how I'm going to use them on my own personal FAQ repo and any other open source projects that I have and make available to the world. GitHub discussions are similar to issues on a repository, but completely different. So when we normally use issues on GitHub, it's to, you know, you could actually have issues for just questions, or you're actually raising a bug issue, like, hey, there's, I found this, this issue with the software, it doesn't do what it's supposed to do, or, hey, I want to request a feature. You know, there's a lot of different things that uh, GitHub issues have actually been used for, and successfully, you can use templates, you can let users interact with them, and you can have long-form discussions on these, eventually close them out, reference them by, by using you know, hash numbers. You can actually reference different other issues or pull requests. All of this stuff works interconnectedly together. But what if we're just having a long conversation about an issue? So saying, I found this bug, and we need to discuss whether the, the benefit of fixing this doesn't affect you know, a lot of other people and their particular use case or whatever the issue may be, and you're having a very long discussion on an issue. Well, that's not, actually maybe not the place for that. Maybe this issue is meant to be just the actual reporting. Like, these are the symptoms. This is how you replicate it. And you know, this is the work being done on it. Reference pull requests, reference commits. But the actual discussion, the meat of the conversation, lots and lots and lots of back and forth and posts and other people chiming in, probably not the best thing to do to just spam these issues in the issue section. Now with discussions, we actually have an option for more long form discussion where it actually does not like spam the issue sections of these repos. So in this way, you're able to go into the discussions and say, hey, I, f I have an idea for this feature request, or I found that that one issue that I want to contribute to, how should we go about that? Or I want to raise this issue, or is, has my issue already been solved and I don't want to bother the maintainers? All these types of questions, initial, you know, broaching a conversation, 
and back and forth can all be done in discussions before we actually file issues on a repo. An issue is like, I want something to come out of my action of filing this issue. Whereas discussion is like, hey, let's open up a dialogue and have a conversation. Maybe it might lead to an issue, a pull request or a commit. Maybe I just have my question answered and then I can go about my day. So separating these two pieces of the open source software workflow is gonna be very, very helpful for developers because now we can say, hey, we're gonna take this to a discussion. We're gonna you know, hash out all that stuff, come back to the issue, only put the absolute essentials, what happened, how can it be replicated, what the current situation is, how do we fix it, what are the implementations, reference pull requests and, and uh, commits, and solve the issue. So I think this is gonna be a very great contribution. We're gonna look at it a little bit more in depth. Another really great use of these discussions is another form of community building around either a framework or a particular piece of software or maybe an individual. Now, I have my own FAQ repo that I'm building up and I likely have ideas for other things in the future. And what I use that for is people can commonly, you know, ask common questions that I, I get a lot and then they can search for, has my question already been answered? This way I don't have to repeat myself, which is, you know, the programming dry principle, don't repeat yourself. So this way I can have a repo with completed discussions now or prior it was completed issues of questions that I've been asked and have answered. And in this way, it was easier for me to, to keep on top of people asking questions. Now, for community building, I think that Eddie actually has a great setup here on his support community uh, discussion repo. And what he has is a large amount of, you know, just discussions that people can take place in or take part in. And they can ask questions, they can raise ideas and contribute to this repo by, you know, communicating with each other, helping each other and just being a part of the community around Eddie. And I think this is a great feature to have because now there's more of a community building, social networking aspect around the software that we use and support on GitHub. Another great use of discussions is just another form of documentation. Now with discussions, when you can treat them as asking questions. So for instance, um, I may have received an, a question about uh, mermaid JS flow charts in the obsidian and how in obsidian and how to like, you know, click on the nodes and have it hyperlink to a page. Well, I can answer that question. And, you know, we now have this documentation that I provided, which is, you know, some examples and code to achieve that result. And then just like Stack Overflow, I can mark an answer as an answer, the answer. And in this way, we're able to say, hey, this is the accepted answer, check this out. And even more awesome is I can actually hover over these different uh, discussion points, you know, questions, and it'll actually give me a preview of that answer right here. And it's just like Stack Overflow. You can have your questions answered, an answer can be accepted, and this now becomes a more living form of documentation other than just wiki docs on a repo that you might find right here. Now you may ask, okay, cool. I can you know, have some documentation things here. I can have some questions, but how far can I stretch this? How can I twist this? What can I do? How can I customize this to fit my needs in my own workflow and use cases? Well, you can see that right here, I have a bunch of question mark icons in here. These are the question discussions. They are questions, they will have answers, and I can mark them as answered. I have one here called start here, which is a little bit more of just a dialogue conversation, which is why the icon is different. And it doesn't have a, you know, an answer check mark here. It just says, you know, speech bubble and then, you know, the number of replies. So what we actually have are different categories in the discussions on a single repo. This is my community FAQ repo where I answer questions and refer people to my frequently answered questions. And in the discussions portion, I have this whole page. So all these different questions. I migrated issues to discussions, which you can do. Your issues can actually be migrated to a discussion and we'll cover that in a minute. But what I wanna show you is categories. I have three categories here, general, ideas and suggestions, and Q&A. These are not the defaults. General was a default, but I've changed these other two a little bit, but we can actually modify our categories. We can actually change the name, descriptions, and whether the discussion format ends with an answer or if it's just an open-ended discussion like a thread on Reddit or something. That's cool, we can modify what's already here, but we can also create new ones. And it's the exact same interface. We can actually create, looks like, as many different categories as we want to break up the type of discussions we wanna have. 
And on very large open source projects, that's likely going to become a necessity. But because what we also have is the ability to selectively view just a specific category. So only items that are in that particular category. And then we also have the ability to query those. So the category general, and then we can, you know, that's actually not a good example because I only have one thing there. But if I did Q&A, and I could actually say, hey, only show me Q&A or questions and uh, the question discussions. And then I also want to search for mermaid and then enter. So this way I'm actually able to search for only the questions, question discussions around mermaid. And then I could say, hey, which one is the top or which ones are unanswered and easily find and search throughout a large amount of these potential discussions. And the larger your repo gets, the larger your project gets, this becomes a necessity to do. And one really cool thing about these discussions is that each individual discussion, if you reply to a discussion, it counts as a contribution to GitHub. And what that means is all those little green squares you get on your page, this is actually also from discussions. So you can see like answered 17 discussions in one repository. That's because I moved everything over today. But contributing to discussions actually is contributing on GitHub, just like commits, just like pull requests, everything. This will actually help make you a more active developer, at least in the eyes of the GitHub green squares. So maybe you were in the same boat as me where I have this repo already existing. I had a bunch of issues. I was using issues to track all these questions, but now I want to take advantage of discussions, but I don't want to start completely over. I want to move all that old stuff over. Well, you can. So how we're going to do that is I'm going to actually show you start to finish how to actually create an issue and or walk into an already existing issue and then create a discussion from it. So right here, you can see this is the issues on my FAQ repo. I'm making it important that I don't want people to use issues anymore. I want them to use discussions. So that's why it's pinned here and all that. But we're going to ignore my own warnings. I'm going to create a new one. I have an issue template for questions. Let's just use that. You know, it has some template verbiage. That's nice. So how do I make a discussion from an issue? So we're going to say, cool, that's good. Submit a new issue. And now it exists. Cool. So right now we have a new option over here on the sidebar, right at the bottom, convert to discussion. Now, if it's the first time you've done this, you might want to actually read some of these things. We can also convert to discussion and it'll give you some warnings. Hey, discussions do not have milestones or labels. Existing links will be redirected to the new discussion. The title, description, and author will be the same. And it lets us pick a category. I'm going to pick, uh, let's just do general. And I understand that this is converting an issue to a discussion, which is what we're doing, what we want. And now it's a discussion. It's number 22, and it is now in the discussions section. Now, if I go back to my issues, it's not there. I have one, I have one open issue and I have two closed that I left there, but it is now a discussion item. There's no tie to it uh, back to the fact that it was an issue. It doesn't say any sort of status in here. And uh, I think, mm, nope. Oh, here, right here, here it is. So this is what actually lets you know that it was converted from an issue. But other than that, there's not really anything else tying it to the fact that it was an issue other than this little um, notification here. Now, because it's a item on GitHub, like a pull request, a commit, or an issue itself, it actually has this number, number 22, which means we can actually reference it just like everything else on GitHub. So actually, I'm not, it's not doing it on here. Let's go to a different one. So if I went to here and I want to reference that issue or that discussion, I can do 22. And now we can actually reference that discussion. The last two points I'm going to mention about discussions are some things we see on the welcoming page for discussions. Over here, you see it says most helpful, and it's me because I'm the only one who's been interacting with these so far since I've converted them all. But you can have a couple people uh, over here that show who is the most active in this discussion section for this repo. So if you have a lot of very helpful community members, they will be highlighted just based on the sheer amount of activity that they contribute to the discussions. And uh, if we go to, I think, yes, Eddie's repo here, we can see that there are several other people who have answered some questions and they are considered the most helpful for the last 30 days. And it's a great way of highlighting uh, community contributions to your discussions on a repo. And lastly, we can also pin a particular discussion to the top of the discussions pane. And what I did is my little uh, general discussion right here, instead of it being a question, it's actually my start here 
So I want people to click on this and then read that discussion, which is really just me saying, hey, we're using this to answer questions. Here's how to do that. And some uh, default verbiage that I need to flesh out a little bit more later. But I've already filed a couple uh, feedback issues on GitHub's own discussions for whether we can actually have our own custom background image here, just for like branding in this case. And there's already some other um, suggestions that I've chimed in on about actually using, like we have issue templates, like I had on my repo where I was able to select a question issue template and being able to have the same for discussions because sometimes it's just nice to be able to say, hey, you're gonna ask me a question in this discussion. It's not an issue anymore, it's a discussion, but maybe I still want to have like some, some talking points for you to work through. What is your question? Have you checked the repo already? Have you searched for disc the, these answers already? And have, have basically has their individual done their due diligence before you know seeking out others and their time to answer their, their question um, is an example of what you might wanna do with an issue template. So templates for discussions, and then, uh, well, the templates I think are an absolute necessity that I hope will be added soon. I'm pretty sure they, that that's something that just sounds like common sense, like that they're going to add eventually. This is still beta features. So, um, but I think that also the ability to have a branded customized banner image for your pinned uh, discussion would also be really helpful because as we currently have, um, I can go in here, I can modify, you know, if I want to pin it, it's going to be an option in the sidebar, pin discussion. But if I want to unpin, same thing. But if I want to edit that, I get a choice of like the icons in the background here or the these preset background colors. But what if I wanted to have my own background image like on my own personal repository? Um, actually, it's on this FAQ repo. What if I wanted to have um, my custom banner image, something sort of like this, but as the actual pinned banner? And maybe I'm pointing to the name of the issue over here like, hey, go look at that. That way I could say, hey, start here before you file a discussion or open up an issue. So those are some re requests that I have either contributed myself or have chimed in on, and hopefully those will be implemented sometime soon. But overall, I think the, the current addition of these discussion features to repositories is absolutely amazing. You need to go into settings to turn them on. Uh, once you go to settings on your repo, settings, um, you can scroll down here and it's in features for discussions right there at the bottom. It'll be unchecked if uh, you have access to the beta. So hopefully you find this interesting, you enjoy this feature. Let me know how you're using it, are you using it, what you might be using it for, and yeah, just let me know how, how much you're going to enjoy and use this feature. I know I'm going to be making a lot of use, uh, usage out of it, and uh, yeah, looking forward to all the ways we can take advantage of the new uh, features we have available. So a quick note before I go, um, a quick thank you to the patrons who support this channel. Devin, Rito, Leonardo, Ed, Brandon, Klaus, Alberto, Clark, Joel, John, John, and Paul. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. Every little bit helps, and I really appreciate it. Whether you donate on PayPal, buy me a coffee, Patreon, or any other form, I really appreciate your support. And yeah, so that was all for today. I um, hope you enjoy this, and I will catch you all in the next one. Thank you.